So this is how I've seen the recovery of people from addiction happen. You know, I'm currently running a rehabilitation program in Kafue. I'm still running the online program. Sorry for the noise, I'm on the street. Yeah. So in the first, you know, like a uh, few days, um, when somebody starts their rehabilitation, um, the, the urge to take part in the addiction is very, very high. So you find the person really has to be more isolated and more, more, um, more watched. And then uh, this takes about 40 days, you know, and uh, that's provided there's no other, you know, like, um, that's provided there's no other interruption by, by things like other addictions, you know, like maybe somebody goes into their love addiction, somebody goes into their sex addiction, or somebody goes into their food addiction, you know. So about 40 days, you know, there's a milestone. A milestone at three days, you can see a significant change. You know, at 40 days, again, you see a really, really significant change where a person now starts realizing, you know, that they were really living on the edge because addiction is uh, is living on the edge on a daily on a daily basis. A person is taking a poison, which is killing them, but then uh, it makes them feel good for a moment, and then now makes them feel trapped, gets them trapped. So, and that's what used to happen with me. You know, I'd, I would be so uncomfortable if I haven't taken it. I'd be uneasy. You know, I'd be, you know, um, edgy. If I hadn't uh, taken whatever uh, addiction I was in, whatever hit I needed, and then when I have a hit, you know, and then I will sort of stabilize. But then I find myself in a in a state where I can't think properly. You know, my my thinking is foggy. I'm really not, uh, you know, experiencing life. So so it was like. You know, a catch-22 situation. If it's noisy here, I'm gonna move. So, 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 so that would keep me in in the addiction, you know. And then after that wears off, then I'll feel really, really horrible that I need an, another hit just to feel better. You know, that's where you'll find I would be drinking in the morning, and uh, and the whole cycle starts again. The whole, all the drinking starts again. It starts again. So, so then now, uh, after 40 days, which you see, you find most rehab programs will keep a person just for 28 days or basically a month, and that is before they are really just after they've just beaten the edge, you know, the immediate urge to to to, to, to engage in their addiction. So it's a bit it's a bit too early because after beating that urge. It's now time to start building the, the skills to stay away from it. And then before that happens, the person is, is kicked out of the rehab. So then they'll come back again, you know, and then the rehab places make more money from that. And then the rest of society loses out from what this person can really bring. So, so that's how the cycle goes. Um, so... You know, it, it takes a lot of bravery for people to bring in people into a rehab program. Um, I've got a huge list of people who have um, their relatives or they themselves are ready to come into a program, but then they are not in the program even when they need to, you know. I have a huge list of hungry people who need to eat but are not eating. So, um, you know, it takes transformation on the part of the people around the addict as well as the addict though I have found that the addict transforms quicker than the people around because when I deal directly with the addict it's so easy to convince them to get into a program but then the people around them you know tend to be picky uh, because they've got their own hurdles to to cross sometimes an actual addiction to keeping the addict and really don't want to to lose that uh, um, the, 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 the sense of purpose that they, they think they get from the addict, you know, so they, they hold on. And it, it's not at a conscious level, you know, it's, it's like, um, you know, uh, it happens in a very overt manner, it happens in a hidden way. 
but it happened. You know, a person does it, you know, like just saying, ah, no, he's better now. But the addiction is still there, you know. They, get, they keep getting told that, no, the addiction is still there. But no, no, now he's much better. He, 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 he has stopped. So even if he has stopped, he still needs to, to get into a program because it's going to start again. It doesn't finish. So, you know, and then, ah, oh, the other excuse, no, he hasn't decided on his own. He will never strongly decide on his own. A lot of times when, 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 they, when the addict decides on their own, then it's because they've gotten into some form of trouble and they're just trying to find a scapegoat. So, so it's really, really um, uh, not as straightforward as it is. It's, you know, it's not, it doesn't happen like if somebody has, you know, symptoms of malaria and you, everybody knows, no, get them chloroquine, you know. The point we need to be reached, reached whereby if somebody acts out in their addiction even once, they say, no, let's get them to rehab immediately, you know, because it's that agent because they, they, you never know where the next spree is going to lead to. So, so it, it, it takes a lot of really, um, uh, you know, transformation on the part of the people around the addict as well to get the person through a rehab program. So like the Restart Rehab program includes, you know, modules for, for the family because that just has to start, you know, because without that, then it's a, it's a really, um, it's a really preca preca precarious situation yeah so that's what that's all i have to say for now about this whole topic yeah so um please follow my my, my profile on whichever platform you are and hit the like button and cheerio